the boys on. Get the lads on. Come on, lads. Here comes the trio. There's three of them, you know. <laughs> I'm a sick man. Do you know what I like doing? I go to video shops. I rent pornos and tape over them with the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Put it back in the shop. Really upsets the next person. He takes it home, puts it on. 20 minutes later, he's kicking the TV set. Come on, Dorothy, do something. But listen, the kids, I got grandkids, they'll tell you that. There are two of them. They're called Seek and Destroy. I took them down to the 3D Avatar. I love that 3D now. It used to be rubbish when we were kids. You get a cardboard cutout when you went in, and there's a green bit and a red bit. It made no difference. They told you, did it, didn't you? Took them on, put them on, took them off, nothing. Today, you put the glasses on at the IMAX theater. What's happening? If you pay an extra 20 bucks, you can get a helmet. Your head's inside the helmet. You got the sand and the vision in there. It's unbelievable. So I'm in there watching Avatar, I fall asleep. The grandkids wake me up. Granddad, want popcorn? So I'm trying to get out of the theater. I couldn't get the helmet off. I'm walking through the blackness of the IMAX like this. This guy's coming towards me. I said, where do they sell popcorn? He said, I don't know. I'm in the movie. And then I'm going to invite my dear friend back on to close the show. You've been delightful. Thanks for laughing at me. I hope I can come and laugh at you working. Have you, have you ever been breathalyzed when you haven't been drinking? It's the best feeling in the world. You're driving along, you see the booze bus, you go, Jesus, my lucky day. Inside lane for me. Because you want to be stopped. And they never stop you. Have you noticed? They wave you by. No, I want to go back. I went around the block. It's pouring my rain. I was working at uh, South Junior's Anzac Parade. Bucket and down my rain. There's a coppers coming. Now, got to tell you this. My grandfather said two things as I'm leaving Ireland. Because I, I come from Belfast, a peaceful little village you would read about over there. <laughs> Famous for George Best, the soccer player, and the Titanic. But when the Titanic left us, there was nothing wrong with it. It was all working, the English order the ice. So, my grandfather said, if you get a chance to bring a smile to someone's face, take the opportunity. You won't cure cancer, you won't win a Nobel Peace Prize, but for a second in their, these people's lives, they'll forget some of their problems and relax and come along with your madness. And I've been doing that all my life. And I thought, I should do this to this policeman. He's out there in the pouring rain. He's there all night, he's pissing my rain. He's saturated. I should make him laugh. I'm thinking, how would I do that? If I pretended to be 0.07, he might smile because he might think he's caught a drunk. I thought, I'll try it. He comes up, he says, you've been drinking? I've gone, chim chimity, chim chimity. <gasps> he started to laugh. Ha, ha. He's talking in the microphone. Send the booze bus around. I got one. <laughs> breathe in there. So I breathe into the thing. <clears throat> and he goes, do you realize that drink? You sure you've been drinking, sir? Oh, Danny boy! <laughs> he throws it away, gets another one. It's poor Moraine, he doesn't care. Breathe into that. <sighs> he looks at me. He, he said, you haven't been drinking. I said, no, it's a joke. <laughs> he said, you're an idiot. I said, I know, but I'm not getting wet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Martel.